Yo! <laughs> Yo! We are back. The Banana and D Podcast, Volume 33. We are back. That feels good. That feels good. Man, it's not like we didn't just sit and talk for like 15 fucking minutes before this happened. So, Man. yeah, we are. Never <laughs> have here. For those of you who don't know, we had like Wi-Fi issues. and um, Take two. Take two. It's my fault, but it's fine. We're here. It's not your fault, dude. Not your fault. Like I said, pre on the first pod, the second one, hey, everyone, the banana and bee and messages are like, hey, when another pod's going to happen and all that stuff. I'm like, we're back. I'm, you know, we apologize. We took a little sabbatical. You know, Tay had some big things. I was working on some things. I was traveling a lot. Tay was doing her thing. We're back, though. It feels awesome. Tay, it's like uh it's a little ritual that we you know do on Monday nights. It feels good to talk to you again, my friend. I know, I miss you. And we talk like all the time, but it, just, it doesn't feel the same. As- it's different. It's different. Because we know yeah. when we're talking, it's just you and I talking. Now we're talking the world watches now, you know? So absolutely. So we've been we've been through some shit. We've been through some shit the past I- couple of weeks. We have. We, we've been through it, but uh, hey, we're through it. We're doing it together. We're doing it. You have a great crew with you. Um, likewise, here with me. All right. Like I said, uh, guys, we're going to have multiple, you know, 34 and 35 will be about more stuff. This is about one topic. You know what it's going to be about. And like I said, we're going we're to talk about it today and then we're going to fucking bury it. This is it. This is all you get, people. Um, you know, Taylor fought a couple weeks ago. It didn't go uh, her way. It didn't go our way. And we're moving on. But um takes a lot of courage and respect to even get into that square circle. So I'm going to give you the floor. Uh, let's rip the Band-Aid off. Let's have our therapy session and then let's move on. All right? I was just going to say, let's rip the fucking Band-Aid off. Let's rip it. Everybody, everybody thinks I owe them. Like, there's people that think I owe them an explanation. And then there's like people who are like, you don't owe anybody shit. So right. one, I want to say I don't owe anybody shit. Like that's it. Like I fucking lost. We move on. We're on to the next, but let's get into it. So ah, man, I don't even know where to start. So, okay. For those of you who don't know, if you didn't see the fight, if you didn't see what happened, I lost my fight with Christine. I fought for the 125-pound uh, flyweight title, and it was a hard camp. It was a hard hard six months of just up and down emotional roller coaster. And I got to go to Albuquerque, New Mexico, and go fight for the main event for Bare Knuckle FC against Christine for the title, and I lost. And a lot of people have said I quit, and yes, I did quit. I did fucking quit. I'm not going to sit and say that and – that I didn't and take it away. Um, And honestly, there were so many factors that played into it that I could give you every excuse in the book, but I'm not going to sit and say that Christine wasn't a better fighter. Christine was by far the better fighter. Even with the bullshit that happened all day long, I'm still going to tell you that Christine would have beat me. She just trained so hard. I know she didn't take me as a joke. She knew that I was training hard. So that's great. I think we pushed each other to be better fighters because of this fight. Right. But I had so many things going on that day. I just, I had the most amazing week. I was riding a high all week and I woke up on fight day and I wasn't nervous. I wasn't scared, which is unusual. I didn't feel anything. I felt very numb. And I just went about my day, went and got my hair braided, did the usual things, ate breakfast, had a shakeout, normal shit. But I was just in the worst mood all day. And to top it off, I got to the venue and the commission was kind of shitty. Uh, They tested us for steroids. Uh, So anybody that wants to fucking sit and say I'm on steroids, Britain Hart, Britain Hart. Um, We got tested for steroids. Everybody passed that test. On top of that, though, the commission was just fucking brutal and my mood just wouldn't change. And by the time I got in the ring and I walked out, I felt almost like I had this outer body experience that I can't explain. Like it felt like I was watching myself. Like I felt like I was out of my body and just watching myself go through the motions. I went through the motions of the walkout. I had my dance. I was standing in the ring. Christine was there and just nothing seemed to stick I didn't feel like I was in my body. The switch didn't flip. Like, usually before I fight, I'm ready to fucking murder people. 
just didn't happen. And a lot of people said I quit. And I'm going to give you guys the reason that I quit. Christine hits like a fucking truck. Not just any truck. A goddamn semi truck. Christine was hitting me so fucking hard and so fucking fast. And I shouldn't have quit. Everybody's right. I shouldn't have gave up. It was like one of those things. But at the same time, I had this thought in my head, like, are you going to be able to get this one back? Do you, do I think right now in any way, shape or form that I'm going to do something spectacular that's going to take over this fight? And the answer was no. And Christine was hitting me so hard in my temples, in my jaw. It had felt like I had broken my jaw and in my temples. And I just kept thinking about my kids and like thinking, man, if I, if I don't think I'm going to turn this around, why, why am I going to keep taking damage? Like if I, if there's nothing that's going to happen and like, she's beating my fucking ass. And like, on top of that mentally, like, I had so much shit going on and I didn't feel good and I wasn't there. And like, I do sit right now and think about it. I'm like, man, I wish I wouldn't have said I can't do this. But at the same time, like none of these motherfuckers that are sitting and telling me that I quit are in there getting hit by Christine Ferreira. Right, right, right. And um, anybody that wants to talk shit, feel free to sign the fuck up. Because on top of all of that, like I signed up for this fight. I wanted it. I pushed for it. I got shelved since December. And at the time, like, what else made sense for me? And I talked a lot of smack and I talked a lot of junk. It didn't change who I was, but I talked a lot of shit because that's what got the fight fucking sold. Right, right, right. And so it was just a lot of things going on at once. And I just don't feel like I ever once was, like, truly in my body the day of the fight. All right. So that's a, that's a lot. Uh Thank you for like talking and communicating and hopefully you do feel better. And hopefully I think this will kind of like answer a lot. One yeah. thing you said multiple times and um, you know, we, I was with you all day, the day before and the dinner was amazing. The, and the Wayans were awesome. The, you were talking about the day of, and just being in a bad mood. Like, can you like, can you can't put a finger on it? Like, did you, know why or did was something just off or like when you say you were just in a bad mood where you it just never got out of you you were just kind of like you said woke up pissed and then you fought at 9 30 at night and you were still pissed i mean there were so many things like uh to start things off like a lot of people don't know like i went to weigh-ins and uh after weigh-ins i received like some anonymous text messages that basically were like telling me and like this is me being brutally honest so take it people take it i got text messages like basically someone had downloaded a text app and downloaded me from an app and i know people are going to come for me and be like this shouldn't matter blah 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 but i mean like as a human being shit shit bothers you and i had somebody text me like at the weigh-ins from an anonymous number and they were like you're a fucking whore you have been bullied all your fucking life and nothing's going to change tomorrow. You're going to get your ass beat and I can't wait to see you just get defeated. You fucking suck. Like I've had so many things and like, yeah, like that shouldn't get to me, but that happened. And then like, I ignored it. Like I talked about it with my team and then we moved on. I was over. It wasn't a big deal. And then the next day I just woke up and I was nervous in the morning. And then I went and got my hair braided. This lady did a phenomenal, phenomenal, I can't talk, phenomenal job on my hair. And for some reason I looked in the mirror and I thought, man, I fucking hate it. And I just like was pissed off. And I just knew in my heart, I was like, I'm pissed off for nothing. Then we went to breakfast and like, I couldn't enjoy breakfast. Like usually I'm talking and joking and laughing. I ate breakfast and I just was like, whatever went about my day and just like, as the day progressed, I was like, I really want to take a nap. I didn't take a nap. I just felt so mad. And I was hitting pads, like doing my shakeout and just kind of being an asshole to everybody. And I couldn't figure out why. And like my whole team's like pushing me, being so sweet and so kind. And I just still felt like ill. And then we get to the venue. It's late as fuck. Fights are already going on. I didn't get to get my hand wraps, the hand wrap, hands wrapped until later on. And that pissed me off. They wanted me to do an interview that pissed me off. The commission was being so hard on me. Like 
pushing me like they they put my room right next to christine's and had the door open and i was like this is weird like i don't like that and i didn't get much time to warm up and just everything as a whole kind of just kept pissing me off and like i get it when you're a fighter you just got to deal with it you got to roll with the punches right, keep right. it moving but for some reason i just couldn't control like feeling like pissed off yeah yeah yeah. And I just felt so annoyed with everything. And, and, and that's not me. Like, on a fight day, I'm usually, like, happy, cracking jokes, wanting to do the most, talking to everybody, loving everybody. But that day, I just, like, man, I was, like, in the worst fucking shittiest mood. And then it was, like, once I got to the venue, it just got worse. And, like, by the time I was in staging to walk out for the fight, I was standing there and felt like, where am I? What's going on? I'm not even here. Hmm. I couldn't flip the switch. Like, I just felt like, all right. I, I kept thinking in my head, like, I'm ready to get this over with so I can go back to the hotel. Right. It's so crazy because I don't think people will understand this. Like, I don't think, like, the average show and saying that, I think that's a bad term, but you know what I mean? Just normal people, yeah. right? Like, everyone has this, like, bad days. Like, bad days of being a dad, bad days of their work, bad days of being an employee or a husband or whatever it is. Like, some people are just like you said, have bad days or off. And like, you just had, it sounds like a off bad day. And it was just a really important day and not many, right? What 1% yeah. of the world can say they fought for a championship on like a pay-per-view type of uh, an event. And like the world can see it. And when, you know, John down the street has their bad days, like no one sees yeah. it. Like no, only their significant other or their kids or whatever. So like, I just don't think people realize how, uh, yes, you're uh, a fighter and, you know, uh, you know, a star and you have all this, you know, magnetism to you and all this kind of awesomeness to you. But at the end of the day, you are a person that has good days and bad days and days in the different. And it just seems like you said it just it was an off day. But like I said, like, because uh, I know people are going to come for me and be like, oh, you're just blaming it on whatever. No, like even if I feel like I feel like in my heart and soul, like, even if I had a good day, like Christine was just a better fighter yeah, on yeah. top of all of that. Like I could have had yeah. a good day and that bitch is just fucking tough. I think we yeah. really, and I'm not trying to call her a bitch to be like degrading. I'm just saying it like, yeah, 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 yeah. girls. But yeah. um, I just feel like we both pushed each other to be better. Like, honestly, if I think if I would have fought anybody else too in that division, they would have not hung with me. Like I was in the best shape, the sharpest, the best I've ever been. And that's a great thing. Like, this fight sucked to lose it, but, mm -hmm. but I've learned so many things from it. Like I've learned like one, I became a better fighter. I've trained differently. I looked at things differently. I learned things that I need to work on, like things like my emotions and, um, just all around, like afterwards, after the fact I've learned who's fucking riding with me and who's not. And I sat and I thought so many times afterwards, like, not a lot of people are going to get to experience something in their life that's going to show them who's real and who's not. Right. And so I've got to experience who's really riding for me and who's going to be there through the hardest shit times and who's going to jump right off the train the second that you're not somebody to something. Like, so that's something so great I can take away from it. And yeah. um, it's definitely made me want to be a lot kinder. I'm not trying to like get emotional, but like, the hate that I've received for weeks, like even today, like still today, we're like almost three weeks away and I get shit every day, like telling me to go kill myself or that I'm a bad mom because somebody fucking lost $1,500 on me or the CEO of Bare Knuckle has sat and said that I'm an embarrassment to the company when I've had three fucking bonus performance fight of the fucking nights for that company. To sit right. and tell me I'm the biggest embarrassment that's ever happened to Bare Knuckle, people don't understand. Words steam. And, like, there's the good people who tell me, like, just ignore it, tune it out. But, like, when you're getting constant messages, emails, text messages, Facebook messages, my job relies on social media. So I don't get to just quit social media because I'm having yeah. a bad day. Right, so right. I see shit. I see every fucking thing. I've had people tell me to go kill myself. I've had people tell me I'm a horrible mom, that I don't deserve to ever fight again. I didn't deserve to get paid. Like, 
it's horrible. So it's taught me so much about like humanity and just like being kind and good people, Dave. Like this shit sucks, and I'm sorry to get like emotional. No, 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 no. It's all good. It's all good. Like this is. the first thing like this sucks because like i'm gonna be super honest like the first thing after it happened dan mergliato was in my face like making sure i was okay and i felt so bad about it now but at the time i told him i'm gonna want to kill myself and big dan looked at me and was just like please don't ever fucking say that and don't do that like but i knew i knew afterwards like the kind of backlash i was gonna receive Right. I knew it was going to be bad, but I never expected it to be this bad. But I have such a great support system and such great, awesome people around me that, like, if it wasn't for them, I would not have gotten through this the way that I am. Well, that's good. That's good. Like, you, you know, uh, yeah, I, I don't know how to spin it, I guess. Like, hey, we knew this was what we were going to do here. Um, and then, like I said, we're going to bury this motherfucker and move on. But like you kind of said it, you do feel good about like, you know, who is really supportive and who is really around you. And like I say, like, if if you can get through this, right, like you're going to to me be almost like unbreakable. Like there's nothing you can't get through. You know what I'm saying? Like when you get through this on the other side. um, Yeah. Like I just it's going to be nuts. You're going to be. The thing thing is, like, I want people to realize this, like Christine has been in the game a long time for years. Like she was in the game before I ever even started fighting. And right. um, the first thing she said to me after was like, you're going to be so much better because of this right here. Right. She was right. Like, right. She was like, I had my moments that I had this exact moment happen for me. And now look where I'm at. She's like, you're in the 1%. And if you just keep going, she's like, you're going to be right where I'm at. You're going to be okay. She's like, you're like, just gave me the best words. And like, on top of that, who the fuck else is going to fight Christine? All you people that want to talk shit, please sign the fuck up and fight her. And let me tell you how you fucking fare that storm. Like, right. she's tough. Yeah. But so many people, like, just don't even realize, like, all of the bigger picture of it and all and stuff like that. So, yeah, I I, I wasn't scared of Christine. I wanted to step up and fight Christine. And, like, it, it was a humbling moment. To learn like okay i'm not there yet but so many people don't realize i'm at the beginning of my career and i've i've been fighting for 13 years and i'm still just now at the beginning of my career i'm only 26 yeah and i've done so much already and i'm gonna continue to do more and anybody who sits and tell me tells me i should give up my career because i fucking lost one fight and i had a bad night you guys can go fuck yourselves and anybody who doesn't like me because i talk shit and i say the f word too much Go fuck yourselves. I don't care. And if you guys want to follow me and talk shit on my comments, go subscribe to taylorstarling.com for $9.99 a month, first week free, and you can write me all the fucking hate messages you want. Other than that, you won't get my time of day. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Uh, I did see that was the funniest thing. I don't want to get into it because I want to save it for next week. We'll kind of like start anew. I did see yeah. you with your commentary thing, like one of your uh, guys that at the gym they're like on their on his like post fight celebration. He's like, "Oh, go to taylorstarlin.com." He Everyone told goes, me he was gonna do that. He was like, "I after my fight, I'm saying taylorstarlin.com." I'm like, "No, no, no, you don't have to, but it would be hilarious." And he did. And um, my dogs. Hey, but uh, <laughs> yeah. no, they, it was hilarious, and that was a great night. So I can't wait to get into that. But you know, yeah, yeah. let's rip the fucking bandaid off and like whatever yeah. you have to ask me or say. I feel like I said a lot, but, uh, man, be a fucking good person and be nice to people. Like so many people don't realize having a fight and talking shit is selling it to sell that shit. And so many people were like, man, I spent $4.99 and you fucking quit. Oh, $4.99, bro. You go to Starbucks and spend fucking $8 on a coffee, but you're upset at me because you spent $4.99. And then the CEO to call me an embarrassment after I fucking have put so many great fights on, like, whatever. Yeah, like, you know, I mean, we're on to the fucking next. Um, I do want to tell one story, uh, you know, and like, 
I think we kind of hit it. I don't think we have to, you know, I think other episodes we can talk about like uh, you, me and John Jones and like how cool he was to you guys and your team and like I want to have stuff. him on here. Let's have huh? him on here. Let's get him on here. Let's get him next week. Next Monday night, here. John. Next Monday night. I would love to have him on here. Another thing like media and shit makes people out to be so horrible. And I told John Jones, like, you know, it's easy for the world to see people through shit fucking colored lenses. Yeah. But one thing I can say, I met John Jones. I trained with John Jones. He was nothing but the nicest, humblest, down to earth, sweetest fucking person I've ever met in my entire life. And his whole entire team, everybody at Jackson's Acoma, Ray Borg. Um, I used to train with Ray Borg. So of course he was like, Hey, if you need somewhere to come for the week, come here. And then I just met John Jones in passing and he was always a friend and a fan before that. I just hadn't seen him in person yet. And he is such an amazing human. That's so crazy. Um, all right. My one story is, so it's kind of like uh, infamous now. Um, you know, Taylor Starlin's post weigh in like dinner. It's like this awesome, fun thing. Uh, nothing like it. I flew from uh, Daytona Beach, Florida to go to Albuquerque. And that was one of the main reasons why, but we go out. And it's all of Taylor Starlin's team. And I said this on my podcast, and I know you might even be upset with me saying it, but I'm still going to say this is going to wrap a bow on all this. So we're at dinner. Um, of course, Taylor like picks the place. It's kind of your night. It's your we're, we're there for you. You know, you're yeah. you're you're the star. It's like a birthday thing. So we go to this really fancy like uh, Brazilian steakhouse. They like come up and they like bring this stuff. And they cut the meat for you. It was amazing. It was so good. It was everyone on your team. We even had our buddy Dawson who flew in from Canada. He like joined. So us. Awesome. It, was, it was like a big team. I think it was nine of us. If I remember this nice big round table, it's like all you can eat salad buffet and we're getting drinks. And then the desserts at cheesecake. Some people are getting caramel. Some people are getting a normal, amazing dinner. And so when the, the check comes at the end of the night, Taylor Starlin like picks up the whole check for the whole team. And it's like people like that story wasn't told through media and what type of person you were and some of the good stuff you do for so many other people and for kids and family and, and fans, like none of that shit's out there. So I just really want to tell that story. It was like, uh, like unbelievable. <laughs> stop, don't cry. You're going to make me cry now. I'm going to cry. It was just like, uh, just so like, Almost to me, it should have been the exact opposite. We were there for you. It was your birthday. And for you to like handle that all for us was just very, to me, uh, beyond kind. And just uh, just wanted to say thank you for that. Like, ah, man, people don't understand. Like, one of the things that I contribute everything to is my entire team and the people you, my friends, Do like someone like Dawson who flew all the way out from Canada just to come and like see me fight, didn't even expect to like hang out with me or expect yeah, yeah. To, like come to dinner or anything like yeah. that. Like one of the things before, like during my camp, I kept saying like, like I was putting money back for the trip because I knew like, hey, I'm gonna be a week in Albuquerque, I need to put money to the side. One of the things I put money to the side for was like dinner. I was like, I'm gonna put money to the side because I want everybody that goes out there and whoever's at dinner, like it to be taken care of. And like, people don't understand, like, there's so many people that will try to get at you. There are people who will try to be your friend and that really aren't. But like, man, the real ones, like the real people that love you and accept you for who you are, whether you fucking lose or win or whether you're fighting or not, like the real ones will stay and it yeah, will all, yeah. it will all show itself. Like it will all show itself. The real ones will fucking be there no matter what each and every single person on my team. None of them were like, I'm going to switch up on you because you fucking lost. Like they all were like, the first thing they said to me after was, Taylor, we don't give a fuck if you ever fought again in your entire life. Of course we want you to, we're going to push you to, but yeah. you could just be regular Taylor, nothing from nobody. And we would still love you the same. So like one of my biggest pieces of advice to pe advice to people after this fight and going through what I've gone through with like humanity and people and people that I thought were my friends and finding out that they're not is cherish the fucking real ones in your life and just always give them your best. And even people that like, you know, shit on you, give them your fucking best. Just give everybody your best. And they're gonna like they're gonna stay or they're not. 
Right, right, right. And like the ones that stay, just give them the best you that you can give them every day. Do what you can. And they're going to do the same for you. It's going to come back around. And like, I'm so thankful for my team. Every one of you guys, I'm so thankful for you. You've always been there. Keith Richardson, Shannon, Duke, Ricky, Dawson, everybody. My team at Modern Warrior, like, man, I, I'm so lucky. Like, I'm the luckiest yeah. person because, like, I mean, and the thing that sucks is, like, there was a lot of people that I thought, like, were my friends and that cared about me. And the truth came out, like, after the fight. Like, those people don't give a fuck about you. Right, 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 right. But there's a lot of people that do. And so – the people that don't forget them, you got, everybody's always got someone that just loves them unconditionally. And like one of the quotes I've been saying is like to the world, you might be one person, but to one person, you're the world. And it's just the best. Like I'm That's so thankful. One. And That's like, I've been upset. I have my moments like right now. And like every other day, like I had, I've still, I still have people messaging me, telling me how much they hate me what a loser I am, blah, blah, blah. But like my people and everybody, like I'm so blessed. Like it really has shown me like how loved I am on top of that. So it is what it is. I'm fucking ready to go though. Like I'm like, I've been blowing up my manager. Like, Hey, when can I fight again? <laughs> Man, let's go. Okay. And that is uh, another thing that I took away from it. Like it fired me up. Like, Oh, these people want to talk shit about me. Let's fucking yeah. go. I bet they hop on the bandwagon real, bandwagon real quick when I fucking win again. So I'm ready to get back in there and like win. I don't know. If Bare Knuckle wants to shelf me, I'm going to go do some MMA. I'm going to go do some boxing. I'm going to do something. I don't know. Wrestling, Ooh. I don't know. I'm doing something. I'm not going to sit on the shelf. I'm not going to sit on the shelf. I just saw like today they had like a MMA – MMA, a uh, like a press conference with Jake Paul and Anderson Silva. They might need someone on the undercard, man. They might need a little killer B on that. That's right. So you know, I'm I'm willing to do whatever. There's a lot of people that do extra stuff. I kind of was sitting for a while, just like I'm loyal to bare knuckle. I'm loyal to bare knuckle. But now it's like I can't sit inactive. Like, and I don't think a lot of people realize that. Like, I sat from December until August. Yeah, that's a yeah. long time to sit. And then there was a lot of times I thought I was gonna fight put myself through a fight camp and it didn't happen. Right. So I'm ready to fight. Like, I'm, I mean, I have a little bit of things going on. Like my jaw still isn't like 100%. My black eyes just started going away. Now I just look tired. Um, but other than that, like I'm motivated more than ever. I've been enjoying training. I don't feel pressure and I'm so excited to get back to it. Whether they put me on the fucking prelims for bare knuckle or I go take an MMA fight. I've been, I've been in the gym working MMA stuff and kickboxing. I've been a Look little at that bit Jits of girl. Look yeah, at that so, Jits girl, grappler. Ryan so Battle whatever, teaching it. Yeah, so whatever they need, whoever wants it, I'm ready. I'm excited to get back to it. I love it. We'll end with that. And we'll also end with one funny last line is, uh, you know, so London couple, I think the week literally before you, the big co-main event was supposed to be Singala versus Paige Van Zandt. And then that fight got like booted into like uh, Denver, like two months later. And yeah. then uh, it was like supposed to be Britain versus someone else that just happened this past weekend for the 115 uh, pound title. And they put Sangala into that. So I, Paige Van Zandt doesn't have an opponent. Yeah, come on, Paige, let's dance. I'm there like, man, a great fight would be me and Teresa too. Like me and her fighting again, uh, just to like, why not fucking hash it out again and do it all over again? Uh, Paige Manzant, if you want an opponent, I am right here. I've been, Oof. I'm, I'm ready. Like I'm ready mentally. I'm fucking ready. I'm physically fucking ready. I want whoever it is if they need somebody. I mean, I feel like Bare Knuckle is gonna sit and like try to shit me. Like, to be honest, I love them to death. I love Bare Knuckle, but I feel like I'm going to probably get, like, shelved or something. I don't want that to happen. Right. But, hey, Teresa, Paige, whoever, like, I would love to get in there with whoever. I don't care. Um, I love to fight. So that's it. Whatever. I, I Paige, I think Paige would be money. Paige was in the talks originally way before Christine was. So. Yeah. Yeah. Who knows? Stranger things have happened. There we go. There we go. Volume 33. Officially in the books. That was our therapy session. The band-aid is ripped off. Like I said, <laughs> this is it. That's it. No more. Uh, episode 34 will be about commentating and Nate Diaz and Brian Battle and Modern Warrior. 
Uh, we got a lot of cool shit happening in the Fight Fan right now. So that'd be episode 34. That's next week. Taylor, thank you so much for uh, talking and uh, being vulnerable and having open conversations. Um, all right. We're burying that, it. Wait, 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 wait. Christine Ferrer's birthday was yesterday. So happy birthday. I um, heard that she got to meet Mayweather for her birthday. Um, you know, all the old talk was just like shit talk. That was like the only card I could pull. But happy birthday, Christine. Maybe yeah, she'll come birthday. on the podcast sometime. Yeah. Um, she really is a down ass bitch. So I would love, I keep calling her bitch. I don't mean to call her a bitch like that. It's like the respectable way, but <laughs> she knows it. it. She knows it, man. She, she really knows is it like, she's the we talked about bitch. so much. Like yeah. she, yeah, she's the best bare knuckle female fighter alive right now. All hats off and respect to Christine Fiera. And uh, I'm excited to see actually what's next for her. She was calling out like she wants a big name, probably like maybe from the UFC. So we'll yeah. see. But uh, Taylor. That's it. Episode 33 of Banana and B Podcast. Appreciate you, my friend. We'll talk to you we soon, all right? We love you all. Let's do Later. it. Bye.